Hey guys, Jam here, and welcome back to another What If Kit Bash. And the What If series is basically what if some of the traitor legions, well, they weren't traitor and they were actually loyalists and all that kind of stuff. Now, I've already done a Night Lord and an Alpha Legion dude, and I've been wanting to do a word bearer for a very long time. And then someone actually commented on my last poll about the Alpha Legion dude, asking for like a chaplain word bearer or something like that, and I just had to do it. I had the bits I've been saving for this model. And I was just kind of in the mood to do it. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing today, making a Chaplain Word Bearer. And as you've probably seen on the screen by now, I'm using the Chaplain from the Indominus box. Now I don't actually know if this is available anywhere else. I think GW might have released a kind of like hero kit of these guys, hopefully. Especially because I feel like this is one of the best Chaplain models they've ever done. I don't know why, just everything about it seems super on point. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the gun off of this arm. Well the hand, the entire hand. Now firstly because the wrist guard kind of thing goes like a triangular shape over the hand. You kind of got to slice down there so you don't wreck that section. And with your hobby knife just kind of slowly cut the hand section out like I said without damaging the armor of the actual wrist and the arm. And once the hand's sliced off we're just going to kind of make sure that area is flush, kind of flat and neat for the next section which is going to be this book. Now any book from any kit will do. And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure where this actually came from. I think it might be from the Chaos War Shrine for Age of Sigma. I think that's the most likely place where it came from. And I thought this book was perfect. Now the bottom has got this kind of like metal handle kind of thing on the bottom there. And weirdly it fits perfectly with the hand I was going to use. So I'm just going to leave that on there. And the hand I'm going to use, I'm pretty sure is just from like the intercessor kid or something. I think he has one of those hands that are like holding up, telling people to stop or something. <laughs> a lot of the times I just find these bits in my box and I'm not really 100% sure where they're from. But I know that does have a hand in there that will work. And then after a bit of dry fitting, just to make sure this will fit, I just glued the hand onto the book in a way that looks like, well, he's holding it on that little metal hand grip thing I was talking about. All right, so the next step and probably the most important part is swapping out the Crozius Arcanum. And the reason why this is so important is because, well, one, it's going to kind of be the focal point of the miniature, but also word bearers in all the artworks and stuff like that, and lore guy himself, they're always carrying around these big, honking, gothic-style mallets or maces or whatever you want to call them, and they just look absolutely badass. Now, I've got this one from the Chaos Knights, the Age of Sigmar dudes, and I felt this was a perfect word bearer's weapon. And also, it kind of gave me that, like, regal church kind of vibe. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I don't know what they're called, but you always see this kind of stuff in, like, Catholic churches and stuff like that, kind of that aesthetic to it. Plus, it also has that kind of hint of chaosiness to it as well. But yeah, exact same thing as the gun arm. You want to kind of cut around that triangular bit of the wrist and just get that crozier's off of there. Exact same method, just be nice and steady and clean it up when you're done. Now that we've got all the hands ready for their extra bits, the next step is just to glue the model together, get everything ready while the other bits are like drying and all that kind of stuff. And then because this guy's actually going to be part of my death watch, he's going to be a black shield. Now, if you watch my previous videos, you know what a black shield is, but black shield basically is a marine that's left a previous chapter of Legion because they, don't want, they no longer want to be part of it or their chapter was destroyed. So they slice off the iconography, you know, put chains across and stuff basically. Nobody knows where they're from. So what I'm going to start doing now is just kind of like scratching off the icon on there, digging in some kind of like scratch marks and all that kind of stuff with my hobby knife. Just slicing away, obviously not going too crazy, but make it look like he's scratched away a word bearer kind of iconography there. And once all the scuffs and scrapes on there, Time for the chain. So I whip out my hobby chain here and I just put a little bit of super glue in where I want the chain to start, dip it in there and once it's set and holding the chain in place then I kind of just wrap the chain where I want it, measure it out, clip it with my, well my clippers and just glue it into place. Now I'm going to do this with two chains but the trick is when you actually want your chain to kind of stay in place so it doesn't move around, you're going to want like a toothpick or something and dip it into your super glue and just kind of let lightly dab it across the chain so all the links glue together and the whole thing becomes rock hard. And with that done, now we are left with all the kind of last extra bits. 
as you can see, I've got the backpack on there as well, which is also another perfect part. It really has a word bearer aesthetic to it. It's got that Inquisition eye in the skull, which is perfect for Death Watch. And of course, I forgot to mention before, this guy also has a book strapped to his waist, which is once again perfect for word bearers. And literally all I do here is just glue that Malady Mace thing on. And it fit pretty much perfect. I did a little bit of like filing and cleaning down just to make it sure it's nice and flush, but otherwise pretty spot on. Now for the head, word bearers are generally kind of shown as bald. And I mean the Primaris kits all come with loads of bald dudes. But I had this head from the Custodes. I think it's the Custodian Guard or something like that. I don't know, the head just kind of felt bigger, chunkier. It's got these kind of like pipes coming out of the neck. And he's really, really proper yelling and going forward. And I just felt like this was the perfect head. This was the head I had to use for this guy. And also it'll just to make him stand out a little bit more compared to the rest of the Primaris dudes I have. So I just glue it in there, making sure he's kind of facing the right direction or he's yelling in the direction that he's pointing his giant mace. And then I pop the book on that arm over there and yeah that once again just fit on pretty much perfect. Now I move the book slightly towards the body just so I can get another gluing contact point on the leg just you know I like that extra bit of security with a lot of my kit bashes. And conveniently the bookmark inside the book and the actual iconography on the bottom of that mace are exactly the same so this whole thing is kind of tying together really really well for things I didn't even plan out. Obviously one thing I didn't show here was I glued the death watch shoulder pad on but like I said that's just because my guy's a death watch if you wanted to do something similar you just use whatever shoulder pad you want. Then the last final thing I actually glue onto this model before we get to some green stuff is I just add one more purity seal to the guy's kind of black shield shoulder pad because I don't know maybe he just wants to purify that kind of stain on his armor if you know what I mean and also he's a word bearer so getting absolutely riddled in parchments and stuff like that just fits perfectly now one more thing I kind of wanted to add is if you look at like religious leaders in churches they quite often got these almost scarf like things around their necks like I said I don't know much about religions and stuff so yeah I apologize I don't know what religions these guys belong to whatever but it's a thing and also if you look at dark apostles and stuff on the chaos line of like word bearers and stuff like that they've always got these really really long like purity seal things around the neck area just kind of flowing in the wind covered in runes and words and all that kind of stuff and that's exactly what I want to do here so get your green stuff out just going 50 50 with the yellow and blue mushing it up and yeah easy as that and yeah I've done this kind of stuff quite a lot on my channel at this point so all we're going to do is get the green stuff, roll it out to a very, very long kind of sausage-like thing. Try and keep it quite even because quite often when I do this, I'll maybe make some sections really thin, other sections thicker and stuff. More even, the better. So just take your time with this section. And when you've got it to the length that you want, all you want to do is make sure your surface, your green stuff, your tools are all wet. Now you can use a toothpick for this or a rounded hobby knife or something like that. And you just want to flatten it out because obviously we want kind of like long draping cloth or purity seals or something like that. So you don't want it rounded. And then as you can see, I cut a piece that was way, way, way too long. Now I did this on purpose because obviously if it's too short, then you kind of got to have to redo it. But if it's too long, then you just kind of make it shorter. It's much easier that way. So I just kind of squeeze the green stuff in like the, between the shoulder pad and the neck area. Get it in there so it's holding into place. Get it into the rough kind of position that you want. You know, get it like flapping around the clothes maybe like flowing in the wind whatever you want to do and similar to the book before you want it to have multiple kind of contact points of the model so you can maybe put a bit of super glue on there so you just don't have like a really thin bit of green stuff not holding on to anything it will snap really easy if you move it around and once you got it in a rough position that you want then you can cut it to the length that you need and i just use some like damp clippers to do this and like i said before now that i've got the length and everything I'm going to be moving into the position that I want, getting like the folds and the flaps and the blowing around in the wind kind of aesthetic that I want. You know, mixture between using my toothpick, my tweezers, all that kind of stuff. But once that's kind of done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my hobby knife. And I learned this from my Sons of the Phoenix video where I just did like a really smooth bit of green stuff. It just didn't look right. If you're having like long pieces of paper hanging off of you, they're going to be slightly torn and ripped, especially if you're going into battle. So as you can see in the video, I'm just going to use my hobby knife very sparingly not going too over the top I mean I probably went a bit too over the top with this one 
But I just start adding little bits of like nicks and cuts and like little tears in the seal, especially at the bottom. And I feel like that definitely, definitely helps sell the whole purity seal thing a lot more. So I mean, even if you look at GW purity seals, they've always got kind of like little tears and stuff on the sides. Maybe not as much as I'm doing, but it definitely helps it fit in. Now I'm going to be doing the exact same thing for the other side. And one thing to also kind of keep in mind as well, I mention this quite often in these videos is keep in mind the kind of flow of the model, what direction is it going in. Now if I look at all the other purity seals and stuff in this model, they're all kind of just flat. They're not really blowing to the left or to the right. Everything is just going kind of downwards. So that's pretty much what I'm doing with these guys. I mean, they're both kind of rippling a bit backwards. But other than that, there's not like a massive amount of movement with this. You know, I'm make sure, making sure I'm super gluing it onto different contact points, roughing up the edges. Maybe if I need to get in the wet kind of paintbrush in there to kind of smooth the green stuff out. But other than that, that's pretty much it. And yeah, all that's left to do now is cut to a showcase. Another painted showcase I'll have, you know. So yeah, let's check it out and I'll get back to you guys. And there we have it guys, in all his word bearing glory. Now once again, this is not exactly the most complicated kit bash ever. I think I say that about most of my kit bashes, but I think the Indominus Chaplain really, really, really sold itself and worked so perfectly for the word bearers. There wasn't really much I needed to do. But the things I did add, I do think this model actually came out pretty effective. But most importantly, what do you guys think? When you look at this guy, does he shout word bearers to you at least a loyal version anyway does he kind of have that religious priest kind of vibe especially because he's a chaplain as well and word bearers it just kind of fits perfectly together and as of <laughs> recording this voiceover i haven't actually finished painting this model yet so i'm hoping by the time i actually add in this little showcase part the model will be done to a really high standard if not there'll be a really nice kind of base layer to it but you know I tried out some volume highlights and stuff like that because I know a lot of you guys are always talking about me painting my death watch stuff so I needed to get that black armor kind of down this was my first attempt at it and I think it turned out all right so hopefully you guys will see more death watch you guys painted up in the future because that was my main kind of sticking point was the black armor but anyway guys let me know what you think in the comments below like the video if you enjoyed it Subscribe if you haven't because I release hobby content like this every single week. And as always, I do have a Patreon and a merch store if you want to help support the channel in that way. And then speaking of patrons, I got to give the current patrons a little bit of a shout out. And currently that is Marshall's Miniatures, Irish Rock 1987, Brother Loken and Tic Tac Doe. Once again, guys, absolutely appreciate the support there. But until the next one, bye bye.